We are making the largest predatory shark that ever swam, Megalodon. And it's gonna be about 52 feet long. When the idea was first floated, I thought this is like the greatest thing that we could possibly put out there. The Megalodon joins the museum's other cool things as tools to get people really curious about the amazing planet we live on. Well, people are fascinated by Megalodon because it's basically the T-Rex of the oceans, a gigantic predator, really is almost indescribably large. I would be like a snack, just one half a bite. Megalodon had the most powerful bite of any animal alive or, in, or extinct. Could generate bite pressures of up to 40,000 pounds per square inch much higher than a T-Rex or a crocodile or anything like that. But no one, as far as I could tell, had ever made a life-size, scientifically accurate megalodon. I think this is the only life-size megalodon built, but I'm pretty sure it's the best one that's ever been built. I've been watching Gary Staub work for decades, and the guy is amazing. The megalodon was built by Gary Staub. I was very delighted when he was selected for the job, and I was always hoping to work with him on a project. So this was a personal dream of mine come true. So it's kind of cool. It's a very exciting shark. Sadly, the shark is so large, it doesn't fit, completely fit inside of our shop. So we've had to build it in sections. The joke is like, you're gonna need a bigger building. So one of our biggest challenges is to try and get a 50 foot shark through an eight foot tall door. Uh, so each one of these sections actually fits through the small historical Constitution Avenue entrance. We had to break it into pieces to be able to get it in the building. And we'll assemble everything on site. This is a scale model of the entrance to the museum. And we use that to help figure out exactly which pieces will fit in through the doorway. Some of them are a little tight, I have to say. We made sure that Megalodon was portrayed as a biologically realistic animal. People long thought that the great white was the closest relative of Megalodon, and new research shows that that is not the case. In fact, these sharks are probably more closely related to Makos. And so we really rethought, you know, what would be a plausible color, make the body shape very different. What's really cool about this is that the rocks right around Washington, D.C., literally on the hills across the river here, actually have Miocene age sediments that have Megalodon teeth in them. So Megalodon actually lived right here in Washington, D.C., on the mall in Washington, D.C. So the model of Megalodon we're making is a model that is located where a Megalodon could have been swimming 20 million years ago. And that to me is an amazing thing. So that's just a local fossil. The Megalodon could have been right here. Gary and his team were amazing. When they arrived, there was just a truck full of 21 panels of fiberglass, which they bolted together into a thing that looked like a shark. They'd crawl in the middle of the thing and crank it all together. But then they had to fill in the seams, and they had to polish it down and sand it off. Then they had to spackle it so it had a uniform texture, and then paint it so it looked like a shark put its eyes on and its teeth in. But they hoisted it up in the air today, and I walked in and like, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to look like. It's an amazing thing. Gary did a fantastic job, and I think this is going to be a major attraction of our museum. And when you see it, it is so startlingly big. I mean, it's, it's you know, I say 50 feet long, but when you go and encounter it, it makes a great white shark kind of look like a minnow. I want to stun and awe people with the beauty and wonder of the natural world. And when you see something like that, you can't even believe that it was alive.